Good morning, Children's Church. How are you? I hope you've had an amazing week and you're all doing well. I would like to lead us into worship now. So I'd like to encourage you and your family to prepare your heart to be ready for praise and worship. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for that time of worship. I pray that you'll prepare our hearts to hear from you and that we will learn, learn in today's lesson. We thank you. We give you all the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. So we're going to have a quick recap about what we learned last week. In last week's lesson, we learned about a man called Abraham and his wife, Sarah, and how they learned how to trust God. I'm going to give you the three points that we did last week. The first point is that God wanted us to follow him and trust him. In all situations, we should put our trust and our faith in God. The second point, that no matter how long it takes, God keeps his promises. Just like he did with Sarah and Abraham, he gave them the desires of their heart. He will surely do that for us. Amen. And the third point, God is willing to give us the desires of our heart and he is more than able. Keep trusting him, children. Last week's memory verse was taken from Proverbs 3, 5 to 6, which read, Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Don't depend on your own understanding. Remember the Lord in everything you do and he will give you success. I really hope you were blessed by that verse. Trust the Lord with all your heart. Don't 
don't depend on your own understanding. Remember the Lord in everything you do and He will give you success. Proverbs 3, 5-6 to six, It says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lead not in your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge Him and He shall direct your path. Proverbs 3, verse 5 to 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge Him and He shall direct your path. Proverbs 3, 5 to 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge Him and He shall direct your path. Thank you to everyone that participated in last week's challenge. I'm really proud of you. Well done. So, let's say hello to Aisha. Hello children. Welcome back. And a special warm welcome if you're joining us for the first time. I hope you're all doing great and had an awesome week. We miss you all so, so much. So now it's time for today's lesson. I hope you all listen very well and enjoy it and hope God speaks to your hearts. God's story. Peter walks on water. So remember how part of God's story is about a guy named Simon who was renamed Peter because he was one of the first people to follow Jesus? Well, it goes like this. Peter left everything to follow Jesus with 11 other guys. They were called disciples. And one day, they were with Jesus while he was teaching a large crowd. After teaching, Jesus wanted some time alone to pray. He told his disciples to go ahead of him in a boat across the Sea of Galilee. Later that night, the wind picked up and the boat was surrounded by crashing waves. Meanwhile, Jesus decided to join them. And since Jesus can do anything, he walked out to the boat, right on top of the water. When the disciples saw a man walking across the dark sea, they had no idea it was Jesus. They thought it was a ghost. Jesus said, be brave. It's me, don't be afraid. Peter decided to find out for himself. He said, if it's you, tell me to come to you on the water. So Jesus said, come. Kids, if Jesus told you to step out onto the stormy waves, would you do it? Well, Peter did. He got out and walked on top of the water just like Jesus. As soon as he saw the crashing waves though, he got scared and started to sink. Jesus caught him and said, your faith is so small. Why did you doubt me? It might sound kind of surprising that Jesus called Peter's faith small, when he was the only one brave enough to get out of the boat. But the truth is, Jesus is powerful and can help us do anything. He wants us to trust him even when it makes no sense or scary things are happening around us. When Jesus and Peter climbed into the boat, all the disciples realized Jesus is most definitely the Son of God. So they worshiped him. And that's part of the story of Peter. So, in case you missed it, here's the quick version. Peter was a disciple. The disciples got in a boat. Jesus prayed. Waves crashed. Jesus walked on water. The disciples got scared. Jesus told Peter to come. Peter walked on water. He saw the waves. He got scared. He sunk. Jesus caught him. The disciples worshiped Jesus. And that's a part of God's story. I hope you all enjoyed watching that lesson and was able to learn something new. What an awesome, powerful miracle Jesus performed. Jesus is powerful and he can do anything. I just love that. Even when scary things are happening around us and things seem to be not going quite great, Jesus can still help us in those situations. The first miracle was Jesus walking on the water. And then Peter also followed out and began to walk on the water. He did this for a few walks, few steps, and then he began to sink. This happened when he took his eyes 
off Jesus and was focused on the stormy waters around him. When Peter got distracted, that's when he lost focus and he just couldn't hold on and he was sinking. But Jesus saved him. He needed Jesus to help him get across or otherwise he would have drowned. This story shows us that we need to focus on Jesus when things may not be great around us. Focusing on Jesus means trusting him, even when things around us seem scary or things aren't particularly great around us. It also means praying, praying to him to ask him to help us. It also means listening to the things that we know we should be doing, God's instructions. As a result, he sees us through and he helps us, just like the way he helped Peter across the water. Be brave, don't be afraid, keep your mind on Jesus. He is always there to help you. So now it's time for this week's memory verse and it's taken from Hebrews chapter 12, verse two. Let us look only to Jesus. He is the one who began our faith and he makes our faith perfect. So today, we have a fun, exciting activity video performed by a few familiar faces. So everyone, let's join in. I'm sure you're going to enjoy it. Good morning, Children Church. How is everyone doing today? I hope uh, you're all doing well at home with your parents, with your siblings. I hope uh, you're getting on together very well and uh, you're keeping yourself uh, positively busy. Yes, uh, the church is locked down at the moment, but uh, Jesus is not shut down. Remember that. You can still praise him in your room, in your sitting room, wherever you find yourself. You can kneel down, you can jump, you can dance, and uh, all for his glory. So, uh, I uh, would like uh, all the parents, everyone in the house, to stand up and join in. Yeah. 
to everyone who got involved took part in the activity yeah he gave it a go praising and dancing are awesome ways of expressing our thankfulness to God for all the amazing wonderful things he's done for us so dancing is a great way to keep fit and look after our bodies which is also the temple of the Holy Spirit so now it's time for this week's challenge so this week we've set you a drawing challenge slash homework for you to complete. So I would love for you to recreate the scene of both Peter and Jesus both walking on the water. So send your pictures by email to admin at thekingshouse.co.uk. You can do this by asking possibly a parent or a sibling to take a landscape photo of your picture in good lighting and sending that over to our email address as shown on the screen and sending that in by Wednesday at 12 p.m. Thank you and well done. For those who haven't participated in a challenge before, I challenge you to get involved in this week's. So now we're going to close in prayer. So get into your prayer positions and let's pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Dear Lord, thank you Lord for this special time of being able to praise, being able to learn something about how awesome and how great you are. Thank you Lord for speaking to our hearts. Thank you Lord for reminding us that you are there to help us during any situation. You are there to see us through and to save us. Thank you Lord for this awesome privilege. May we never forget this. May you always help us to remind us of this. We pray for the coming week Lord. We pray Lord that this week will be blessed. It will be a fun week and it will be a happy week. We'll be able to spend lots of time with our friends, family and be active. And we'll be able to meet once again next week Sunday. We thank you. We know you've heard our prayers in Jesus' mighty name. And everybody say, Amen. So let's join in to share the grace. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. And surely goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. So now let's share our confession. I trust God for a remarkable year of fruitfulness. I will endeavor to hear God's voice clearly, obey his instructions carefully and serve his agenda willingly every day. As a result, Everything God promised will come to me speedily this year. In Jesus' name, Amen. So that's the end of the service. Have a blessed week. See you next Sunday.